Welcome to the Greater Portland, Inc. Bioscience Tour. Hi, I'm Monique Claiborne, CEO and President of Greater Portland, Inc. Thanks for joining us today. Over the next 45 minutes, we'll be giving you an overview of the Greater Portland area and diving into some of the reasons it's emerging as a bioscience hub. In the last decade, the Greater Portland market has become one of the fastest growing metro areas in the United States. Our region continues to attract businesses and residents because it offers so much in terms of outstanding amenities and value. One of the best assets is our location. Greater Portland is centrally located in between the bioclusters of Silicon Valley and Seattle. With easy access to Asia Pacific markets, Portland also enjoys excellent connectivity to business centers across the United States, as well as destinations in Europe. Greater Portland is one of the most affordable large West Coast cities to live and do business, especially compared to the San Francisco and Seattle markets. We have a friendly business climate that encourages companies like Intel, Nike, Adidas, Daimler Trucks, and Genentech to stay and grow. Here you can grow faster and go further at a lower cost. On top of the affordability, there are state-level investments in both Oregon and Southern Washington. These investments include startup incubators and strategic reserve funds to incentivize growth. But our region's greatest strength is our highly skilled workforce and our phenomenal ability to attract new talent. With a combination of quality of life, affordability, and world-class higher education institutions, it's no wonder we have the highest net in-migration of talented young workers in the entire Western United States. Today, you'll hear from some of the leaders in the bioscience space who will share why they have chosen to grow and expand their companies in Greater Portland. After our conversations, we're confident you'll want to put down roots in the Greater Portland market. Let's start with a broad overview. The Greater Portland market sits at the joining of two great rivers, the Columbia and Willamette, and has a population of 2.6 million people. The metro area spans Oregon and Washington and sits at the shadow of the iconic ski destination, Mount Hood. Lots of places boast high quality of life, but for us here, what that truly means is that you can be at the Pacific Coast in about an hour, the region's world-renowned wine country in 30 minutes, and into the snowy mountains of the Cascade Range in less than 60. Along with that is a world-famous food and beer scene, top-notch Pinot Noir, and a creative culture that allows people to express themselves and enjoy a healthy work-life balance. Based on survey data from last August, U.S. News & World Report named Portland the number one best city to live in on the West Coast, and we agree. Greater Portland is regularly recognized as a leader for its public transportation infrastructure and access. Light rail lines stretch across the region, and a world-class biking network has earned Portland a spot as the number one bike commuter city in the U.S. When travel resumes at a safe and normal clip, we would love to host you in our market and have you experience America's favorite airport seven years running. PDX has international connectivity with nonstop flights to London, Frankfurt, Amsterdam, Tokyo, and more than 40 flights to the Silicon Valley each day. Later, we're going to take your questions to our panel. You can ask a question at any time simply by clicking the blue Ask button in the chat box. And if you'd like to set up a time to talk to our team, simply email us at bizdev at greaterportlandinc.com. We can't wait to show you all that Greater Portland has to offer. To get things started, my first guest is Lisa Bozinovich from the Oregon Bioscience Association. Lisa sits at the hub of the local bioscience community, working in both Oregon and Washington to ensure the region's firms have everything they need to thrive here. But first, we're excited to introduce you to one of the companies making its mark on the bioscience world stage. Here's Tim Brown from Genentech. Genentech has a, a really rich history um, in, in the US, founded more than 40 years ago, and, and is, is seen as being the first biotechnology company um, in the States. And you know, since that time, we've been focusing on sort of groundbreaking, uh, life-changing medicines that for, for people who face you know, really serious and tragic conditions. We invest more than $10 billion a year on research and development. And we're, and we're a member of the Roche Group, um, which is based in Switzerland. One of the things that I think we've really benefited from and being here in Portland 
I think is this sort of spirit of innovation here in Oregon. I mean, we have many other companies that have sort of their innovation hubs here, whether it be Semiconductor with Intel, you've got Nike and other sort of apparel companies, but there's definitely this spirit of doing something different. And certainly when we connect with many of our partners across the metro region, this spirit really shines through. The experience, I think, is openness and friendliness to break through and do different things. I think our story is a really successful one. We've expanded in the region twice. And the reason for that is access to talent, whether it be attracting talent from our organization down in the Bay Area or from other parts around the country, Portland's a place that people want to move to. And one of the biggest attractions for me for this amazing place is the outdoors. And, you know, with the outdoors comes the amazing people that live here in Oregon and how warm and friendly they are. And, you know, you have this small town feeling that's actually within a really big town. Here in Hillsborough, we have a, an amazing pipeline that we're generating from many other industries, whether it be semiconductor or some of the other um, industries here in Portland. We have an amazing relationship with PCC um, and have developed an amazing apprenticeship program in biopharma manufacturing. Talent has been something we've built with our partners and it's one of the reasons why we continue to grow. Our partnership with the county and the city of Hillsborough has been fabulous. If there's a challenge at my site around a permit or something else, to have the business development director's cell phone, you know, on my phone and I can call at any time and things happen. The speed that we were able to uh, build and develop our site with the permitting process the speed at which we partnered with the local trades alliances to bring really great construction trades to build the technology that and we obviously produce our medicines. And then the partnerships to bring talent in and um, continue to grow that talent pipeline. One of the partnerships that's been uh, very successful is our partnership with um, Oregon Bio uh, Science Organization. We're one of the early members We've developed curriculum with them for our employees to grow. We partner, use it as a think tank, and you know, it's been an amazing partnership just to um, expand you know, what's possible. And I'm really excited to think through that partnership will attract more businesses to, to Oregon and to the greater Portland area. If you're looking for a place where the cost of living is good, and uh, there's this really friendly, innovative partnering spirit. This is the place to be. Thanks so much, Tim. And now, the Executive Director of the Oregon Bioscience Association, Lisa Bozinovich. Oregon Bioscience Association is a trade association for the life science industry in Oregon. We've been around 30 years. We have 160 member companies, many of them small to mid-sized companies in the bioscience industry. And we break that industry down into five industry sectors. So we've got our research, testing and medical labs, our medical device, diagnostics and equipment as well as a drugs and pharmaceutical industry sector and a bioagricultural and a distribution sector as well. Our mission is to really accelerate the growth of the life science industry. We're really working to ensure that we have a strong, healthy bioscience cluster in the region. And on the workforce front, um, it's really important that our companies have access to great talent and talent development options. And then on the access and innovation side, really making sure that policies in place to help foster bioinnovation in the region with our great economic institutions and all of our startups and scale-up companies. Our goal really is to ensure that our, our folks in the greater Portland region have access to all of these great innovations in the bioscience space um, being developed across the world.
We've got great technologies coming out of our academic institutions. We have a very strong bioscience incubator that's supported by the state. And we've got great talent here. And really those are the three key things that our investors are looking for when they're looking for their next bioscience investment. Oregon Bio has worked really hard over the years to develop a strong workforce training program. And we've worked specifically with our member companies, listening to their needs about the ability to develop talent within Oregon and within their companies. And a number of years put together a really robust workforce training program that supports needs and really helps them develop that talent from within their companies. And we've had companies looking at Portland and they test us out. You know, they'll post a job in the local job market and have reported back to us that they're very pleased with the, the talent pool that is available here in our region. So it makes us feel proud. They're able to attract top tier talent into the region and that has both direct and indirect benefits to the bioscience industry. With the growth of the digital health and health IT sectors in the region, um, that's one area, but also many of our companies are really relying on AI and machine learning and incorporating that into their processes. And so that's a big bonus having uh, um, Intel's global R&D headquarters here. The secret sauce for Greater Portland when it comes to bioscience is a combination of things. We've got a great cost of living, high quality of life, um, we've got a global airport, and when you combine that with the talent pool and the, the access to the great talent and research collaborations that exist in the region, you really find that Portland is a great place to consider um, relocating your company. Thank you so much, Lisa. We want to remind you that if you'd like to set up a meeting or ask us specific questions about your particular business relocation or expansion needs, please reach out to our team at bizdev at greaterportlandinc.com. One of the critical ingredients to building a vibrant bioscience hub is having strong research and education partners. I had a chance earlier to talk with Aditi Martin from Oregon Health and Science University. But first, let's hear from Absci, one of the many bioscience companies successfully growing their business in Greater Portland. Absci is a biotechnology company located in Vancouver, Washington, which leverages synthetic biology and artificial intelligence to discover novel protein therapeutics and develop genetically engineered bacteria to efficiently manufacture these drugs. Our platform allows us to perform greater than 10 million experiments simultaneously to identify the best drug molecule and the best production strain. This leads to a significant decrease in the cost associated with manufacturing, decreases the time it takes to develop uh, manufacturing processes, and enables next generation therapeutics, which currently have no good manufacturing solutions to get to market where they can affect patients' lives. There are plenty of advantages uh, to starting a, and growing a business in the greater Portland area. Our founder, Sean McLean, uh, started the company in the greater Portland area uh, primarily to save costs, and we've been able to continue to grow here ever since. We stay because we love it here, and we've been fortunate enough to receive uh, financial support from both the states of Oregon and Washington. In fact, um, Early on, uh, we were residents in the Oregon State Supported Bioscience Incubator that was built to help uh, facilitate the launch of uh, biotech companies. Um, and when we outgrew that space, we moved across the river to uh, Vancouver, Washington, to a lab we built uh, with a financial commitment from uh, Washington State Governor Jay Inslee. It's a great uh, region that still has room to support the growth of a company like ours as we continue to expand um, to meet the needs of our partners. We got early support from local and regional investors. And in our more recent rounds, we've been able to access capital from nationally recognized top tier life science investors, despite not being in their backyard. Uh, with global, the global nature of business and investment, we found that what's important is the quality of the business and its opportunities. You don't need to be located within a half hour drive of Sand Hill Road. Um, and we like being in the Pacific Northwest. For myself personally, um, one of the reasons that, uh, that this uh, position is so attractive is that we're able to be 
uh, located in such a beautiful area where I have access to to hiking, camping, and skiing, uh, something that you don't get in uh, some of the other biotech hubs. Uh, but at the same time, I'm able to do world-class science um, with, uh, with an amazing team. So we have some great homegrown talent um, in the greater Portland area. Um, and we've been able to, to recruit from that pool. Uh, but we're also able to effectively recruit from other areas. Uh, because of the advantages in terms of cost of living and quality of life, employees are often eager to relocate to the area. Many of our current employees, including myself, have migrated from areas like San Diego, uh, the Bay Area, Boston. And once they're here um, and they really experience the Pacific Northwest, it's mix of, of nature and access to cosmopolitan opportunities, they're happy to stay. The region has everything you need in terms of the fundamentals of building a successful tech or biotech company in an inspiring location where you can build out a satisfied, creative, and happy workforce. Thank you so much, Matthew. Our talent pool pipeline and ability to plug into our largest hospital university, Oregon Health and Science University, is a central focus for many bioscience companies. I was able to chat with the Senior Director of OHSU's Collaborations and Entrepreneurship Office, Aditi Martin. We talked about what distinguishes Greater Portland as one of the premier locations in the Western United States. Thanks for joining me, Aditi. Thank you for having me. I understand bioscience is not monolithic. Can you talk to me about the breadth and activity OHSU collaborations and entrepreneurship is seeing? Yeah, absolutely. At OHSU, we have uh, three missions, research, education, and healthcare. And uh, within our office at Collaborations and Entrepreneurship, we support the entire university as well as the region in really driving innovation uh, more recently, innovations around COVID therapeutics, uh, 3D print printable ventilators, especially for COVID, but that can also be used for other diseases and conditions. We realize that innovation and driving discoveries is not something that's done in isolation and different types of expertise need to come together to move those discoveries forward. So in 2020, Audubon Therapeutics, as you know, a San Diego biotech company developed a therapy to treat multiple sclerosis that came out of a lab out of OHSU. What's most impressive is they recently completed their Series B funding and raised a whopping $76 million. Can you talk more about OHSU spinoffs and startups? Why don't we start with Audubon? That, um, as you mentioned, they're developing a regenerative medicine aimed at treating disorders of the central nervous system. So this company's work is built on research conducted by Dr. Thomas Scanlon, who's a professor at OHSU. Another example I can provide is um, Aaron Nora. Um, Aaron Nora is an OHSU startup that's developing therapies for thrombosis or clotting inside a blood vessel. Aaron Nora has received um, $25 million uh, from NIH grants. So these are federal grants over the past 11 years and signed a major partnership with Bayer Healthcare to develop two more compounds. Another company, Vera Biotechnology, licensed OHSU's CMV-based vaccine platform through a merger with OHSU spinoff company Tomegavax in 2016. Veer is backed by leading industry investor Arch Venture Partners, as well as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Aditi, can you address companies that may be concerned about um, the talent pipeline here to fulfill, um, you know, their needs? Um, I think that we have a really robust talent pipeline here in Portland and in Oregon um, with uh, several universities being really powerhouses in generating uh, talent that can support um, innovative ideas coming from those uh, regions as well as um, uh, for accelerating the development of these innovations. At OHSU specifically, we have over 5,000 students and trainees that are getting their education and hands-on immersive educational experiences in their School of Medicine, School of Nursing, Dentistry, Public Health, as well as Pharmacy. So they are very invested in staying here and finding their next um, adventure um, in their careers locally or regionally. We've certainly seen in the last few years an influx of talent and um, experts that have sort of had previous experience with startups and moving innovations forward. 
um, folks moving in from other parts of the country to Portland. I mean, we live in a, in a very vibrant uh, state. Uh, it's very attractive for uh, a variety of reasons and, and also a really great place to live and raise a family. And so I think that we're definitely seeing an influx of talent in terms of uh, C-suite talent as well as investors. And hopefully that means that they will bring capital with them. Aditi, can you give me your strongest business case why a company should expand and relocate into Greater Portland? Monique, I think we're a highly collaborative culture here that I think will be very pleasant and inviting for companies and individuals that are looking to move into our region. For example, we have an up-and-coming Center for Experimental Therapeutics within the Knight Cancer Institute at OHSU. And the Knight Cancer Institute is also known as one of the pioneers in personalized cancer medicine and as an international leader in research and cancer treatment. I also want to point out that with a highly collaborative culture, we're large enough where there's a lot of activity and innovation that might be attractive to growing companies that want to move to Portland and greater Portland. Uh, But also we're not that big that we can't be nimble. And I think that that's... um, also attractive for these companies that are moving into our area. Thank you, Aditi. If you have any questions or would like to talk further with our team, reach out to us at bizdev at greaterportlandinc.com. Given the importance of physical assets and amenities to growing bioscience companies, we get a lot of questions about the options available with biofacility development expertise. Our VP of Business Development, Amy Giron, spoke with CBRE's first vice president of technology and media practice, Ajay Mahotra, to hear more about those opportunities in Greater Portland. Before we get to that, let's take a couple of minutes to hear another bioscience success story here in Greater Portland. Acumed is located here in Hillsborough, Oregon, which is the Greater Portland area. We are a company uh, with a global footprint and we design, manufacture, market and sell medical devices for open reduction internal fixation for both trauma injuries as well as deformity correction. Acumed is very strong in the Asia Pacific region as well as Latin America as the United States and Europe. Uh, We generally have surgeons traveling here from Japan on a regular basis to get trained on hand and upper extremity surgery as well as foot and ankle surgery. We have a lab here for training as well as a lecture hall for didactic lecture. Uh, So that has helped us and we have been able to grow exponentially because of this unique location. Uh, Many medical device companies are in the East Coast, Um, but being here in the West Coast has definitely helped us uh, to build out the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as Southern California, uh, up to Canada. And we are, as I mentioned, uh, the whole Pacific Rim, all the countries in the Pacific Rim, we have business there as well. And we ship all over the world. Recently, Hillsborough has expanded their services for our logistics and we can do end of day shipping and it can get to our customer through the International Airport at Portland within 24 hours and in many cases the next morning. That's critical for us because the patients that are treated with our surgical devices, oftentimes it's a trauma. We're in the business of restoring function to get people back in motion. And it's important for us not only to serve our customers with high quality products, but to do business the right way and to try to be sustainable in all aspects of our business. And we feel that that is our social responsibility. And being here in the Northwest is an enabler for that. The Northwest ethos is one of caring and compassion. And that's perfect when you're in the biotech or the medical device business, because we rely on people that are highly motivated, but also people that have a high level of compassion and they bring that to work each day. Uh, The region is specifically robust for talent, for manufacturing, for milling and turning, and it's been fantastic for us to be able to pull both locally uh, as well as get people from all over the world uh, that will relocate here as well. 
The region of the greater Portland area as well as the Northwest in many ways is similar to some of the European countries. It has the mountains, it has the lakes, as well as the opportunity to have a major city nearby in Portland for dining and other things, uh, for entertaining customers. Uh, the labor costs are reasonable. Uh, the cost of living for employees, the housing market, it's all affordable. Uh, so we are able to expand and grow here without worrying about that having a negative impact on our P&L statement. Uh, so this region is very attractive, not just for companies considering a move within the United States, but for companies coming to the United States from outside. Acumed has been in Portland for decades, and it has been an area that has allowed us to thrive and grow over that time frame, becoming a global leader in medical devices. And now, let's learn more about the bioscience real estate landscape with Amy Geron and CBRE's Ajay Mahotra. Welcome, Ajay. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's get started with a question about just the general advantages that you see bioscience companies having in choosing a location in Greater Portland. Yeah, it's a really exciting time to be talking about bioscience right now for the Greater Portland region. And, you know, honestly, many of the same advantages that have attracted many other companies to Portland, especially during the tech boom of the last five to 10 years, uh, very, very similarly applied to the bioscience industry cluster as well. Uh, a lot of those center around costs uh, and, and, and quality of life. And, and I think the beauty of the Greater Portland story is that it's costs a lot across the entire personal and professional spectrum. You know, from a personal standpoint, employees who live here or who are moving here are finding that the cost of living is simply lower than many other places, particularly the much more competitive markets like San Francisco, Seattle, Boston, Cambridge, San Diego, which are other, of course, hot bioscience markets. Commercial rents here are much lower than those other markets where, where uh, you know, much more demand and much scarcer supply have driven rents to be quite high. And you can find fantastic talent here at more affordable rates. And because, the, because we're more of an emerging market and not a very established hyper competitive market, there's less kind of moving around from place to place. And what that translates to is a lower cost of attrition. You spend money acquiring an employee from local from the local region or out of state. They tend to stay with you longer, and that is also a cost advantage that helps companies operating here. So, cost from a personal perspective, cost from a commercial perspective, and quality of life all combine to make the Greater Portland region a fantastic choice for bioscience companies. Ajay, can you speak to the venture capital that's accessible in Greater Portland for growing bioscience companies? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So the venture capital ecosystem here in Portland has improved tremendously over the past many years. And I think the bioscience industry cluster is going to see the same benefits that the tech industry at large has seen. Over the past many years, companies like Elemental Technologies that received local venture funding were acquired by companies like Amazon, uh, which was an M&A acquisition for a company that was funded by Oregon Venture Fund. On the other side of the spectrum, Zoom Info went public. Uh, after receiving venture and private equity funding from blue chip firms in the, in the Silicon Valley area. So Portland has demonstrated its ability to attract venture capital funding, private equity funding, and deliver tremendous exits for the funders and for those stakeholders in the companies. The same parallel applies to bioscience. Companies like Absci, which we heard from earlier, demonstrated that whether you're looking for local funding from groups like Oregon Venture Fund, which invested in AppSci uh, early and repeatedly over the past four or five years, or later stage, you're seeing that our location in Portland in the Pacific Northwest is not in any way an impediment to attracting funding from blue chip venture capital firms or private equity firms from across the country. Those venture capital and private equity firms see and find opportunities. And those opportunities exist here in the greater Portland area, and that's why they're investing here. Ajay, can you speak to the construction costs and some of the other assets that we have in terms of uh, talent and migration um, being an advantage for this market? When you come to look at pure office space, you know, the tech companies and software companies that don't have a significant heavy build out from a lab perspective, you look at their requirements, you know, our office space construction costs are much lower than some of the other major tech markets across the country. The lower construction costs and materials costs here in Portland 
tend to then, and labor costs for that matter, tend to then translate into lower leasing rates, which we talked about. When you take that situation and apply it to biosciences, where the build out costs for highly specialized labs, ventilators, filters, chemical storage, and so on and so forth, those costs escalate dramatically, much higher than the cost of build out office space. But our advantages remain. So we are 20 to 30% more affordable from a construction cost standpoint for those highly specialized labs, which tend to cost much more than pure office space. And we're much more affordable than those other major markets. So from a cost perspective to build it out and then, try, and then passing, if you will, that cost onto the tenant in terms of leasing costs, both for the office portion and the lab portion, that's a huge advantage for Portland. CBRE recently published a study that identified Greater Portland as an emerging bioscience hub in the United States. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that report a little bit more and some of the key takeaways? Yeah, I think that report is really validating what many people in the community have been feeling for quite some time. As you know, you've talked about some of the companies that have done well here, including, you know, OHSU and ABSI and others. Uh, The combination of talent coming out of OHSU and the combination of the costs benefits that I mentioned earlier, as well as the arrival of companies from outside Portland expanding into Portland and local companies doing well and expanding and their ability to attract venture capital are all combining to put Portland on a map with the top bioscience markets in the country. Basically in this environment, the lower cost for younger startups in the bioscience industry mean that their venture capital dollars last longer. So the more we are featured amongst the most prominent names in bioscience cities across the country or across the world, the greater the benefit is going to be us. And our advantages in this area, in this area are, are you know, literally undeniable. It's, it's data-based and data-driven. And that's why you're seeing so much initial, initial success uh, with these companies here in the greater Portland area. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the bioscience opportunities in Greater Portland. It would be my honor to work with you and your team to make Greater Portland your next location. If you'd like to schedule a meeting, reach out to us at bizdev at greaterportlandinc.com. Now it's time to answer some of your specific questions, and for that, I'm going to turn it over to our Vice President of Business Development, Amy Geron. Good morning. Thank you so much, Monique. Uh, So we're accepting questions. I'll just remind you to post them in the chat uh, and and we'll be uh, accepting those throughout. So looking forward to hearing uh, from you all. But let's start with a question uh, to Sharon. Um, So Acumed has offices in Greater Portland, internationally, in Texas. Can you talk about the distinct advantages of your Hillsborough location? Sure. Sure. Thank you, Amy. Um, First, I just want to acknowledge Greater Portland Inc. and Oregon Bio for uh, establishing this event and and also just wanted to thank Oregon Bio for their assistance. We are in that surgical medical device sector of Oregon Bio. Um, So one of the advantages is just having professional associations like Oregon Bio uh, to help train employees uh, in the area. So that's one thing. But three other things that have been mentioned Uh, prior in the video is that the cost of living is favorable to most West Coast locations. Uh, We have found that our employees can find affordable housing within a reasonable commuting distance, and that goes a long way. Also, the greater Portland area, this was mentioned before, it does have numerous attractions for our desired talent pool. So we're, we're in the business of getting people back in motion after an injury. So our employees do like to do things like kayak and Uh, hike and ski, and that's readily available here. And that does attract people, especially if we're trying to get them to move in from other locations. Um, We mentioned before the social responsibility for sustainable growth and development, and there is reliable water and environmentally sustainable power sources. Um, This is helpful for both business continuity, but also enhancing our social responsibilities. And then finally, the greater Portland area ecosystem is perfect for us to thrive and grow both personally and professionally. We were able to expand another manufacturing facility on Brookwood Parkway um, over time as we're expanding and we did find uh, the local organizations to be very helpful in that expansion. So thank you, Amy, back to you. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, You're such a great ambassador for the market and I really appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning. So thanks again. Um, uh, So I'm gonna, 
paying it over now to Lisa, you have worked in North Carolina, you've worked in major biomarkets like San Diego, and now you're growing the bioscience cluster here in Greater Portland. So I'm wondering if you can share any insights into what has surprised you as you've gotten to know the market better. Sure, thank you, Amy. Um, so I found the bioscience industry to be a very collaborative bunch in general. And Greater Portland area is no exception to that. And I could argue that we do it better here um, that, than some other places. Uh, I've been in Portland now for, for two years and serving the Oregon and Southwest Washington market. And individuals in this region are very accessible, whether they're leaders from regional divisions of global companies, um, like we're hearing from today, to seasoned startup entrepreneurs, everyone's really vested in sharing and growing the life science industry in the region. Recently, um, we had a front row seat as Twist Bioscience went through their extensive due diligence before choosing Greater Portland for their second home. And we're very proud of the many facets that made our region so attractive to Twist. One of them being the ability to move into affordable space large enough to have a smartly designed facility. In other markets, um, space can be at such a premium that companies sometimes have to compromise on how they lay out their operations. And that's not the case um, in Portland. So just one example. That's great. Thanks, Lisa. It was a pleasure to work uh, with you on that twist project, and uh, what a what a great result. <laughs> we were we were so thrilled to have them join us in Wilsonville. So I'm gonna uh, pop over now to Ajay. So Ajay, you frequently work with uh, hi there. <laughs> You frequently work with companies that are considering out-of-market moves and considering moves into Greater Portland. So I'm wondering if you can speak to some of the major site selection factors that you uh, work with them to help under help them understand um, better about Greater Portland. And then also, how has the pandemic changed those factors, and specifically in the bioscience cluster? Sure. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. Yeah, we do have the uh, privilege of helping companies with their site selection needs, and, and many of my prior speakers have spoken to some of the great advantages of being here. Uh, I really want to stress a point that Lisa just made a moment ago, which is collaboration. Many of the Bay Area companies that have come up here in the last five or seven years have noted quite um, starkly, quite remarkably, that the atmosphere, the collegiality of the employee base here and the companies here is one that that frankly doesn't exist in any other market in many other places there's lots of you know competition uh you know backbiting for for, for venture dollars or whatever or, or a competitive spirit that sometimes cannot always be healthy and that's just something that it really has distinguished portland for a very very long time and as <clears throat> excuse me as more companies move here and learn that <clears throat> excuse me that's what happens when you're alive um they are finding that that's that's really true the talent uh, we have had the uh, one of the highest rates of net inbound migration of young millennials to this area for all the reasons that people have talked about the quality of life the access to kayaking and skiing and so forth and the ability to find fantastic jobs in private or public companies here and so it's really to, at the risk of repeating what has been said it's a combination of collegiality and collaboration it's the ability to attract and re retain talent it's the ability to attract capital and private equity and the cost on the personal side and the professional side, housing, commercial real estate, these all combine to make this a fantastic place to be. Great points. Thanks so much, Ajay. All right, I'm gonna pop it over now to Aditi. Uh, so Oregon Health and Science University has a lot of really exciting partnerships um, with other universities that are gonna expand your research capabilities that are coming down the pipeline. So I'm wondering if you can give us just a quick introduction to some of those expanded partnerships that, that are coming soon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of them is um, a partnership between University of Oregon and Oregon Health and Science University. They've teamed up together to and other diseases with a uh, joint center in biomedical data sciences. And uh, the um, implementation of that center is in the works and I'm sure you'll be hearing more about it. Um, the pandemic has slowed some of the progress but not halted it. Uh, that partnership has inspired Columbia Sportswear's uh, Tim and Mary Boyle to support that venture, and uh, we're really grateful for that. Um, 
We also have another program that's offered through our uh, Clinical and Translational Research Institute, which is a gap funding program that supports technologies coming out of universities. And we recently expanded that with Oregon, Science, Oregon State University uh, to include some of their bioscience technologies um, benefiting from the reviewers as well as funding from that program that was supported by Oregon State. So that's just a couple of examples of how we're partnering with regional universities. Really super exciting. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm a beeve, but I, I fully support the partnerships between both, go ducks, go beavers. So um, we got a question from the audience that I'm going to um, ping over to Lisa. So they're asking if Oregon Bio Association has a jobs board. Uh, we do. It's on our website, and um, we make it accessible and free to our members, so um, they're incentivized to post jobs there. And we're also hosting, um, we did our first virtual career fair last year um, in, in conjunction with our annual conference, and we'll be doing two more virtual career fairs um, this year as well, one coming up later this spring and another one in the fall. Okay, great. So we've got a question that makes me slightly nervous, but I also am super confident in this uh, panel <laughs> to answer these live Q and A's. So I'm gonna ask it anyway, because I wanna be fully transparent with our audience. So the question is essentially, uh, what are some of the reasons why bioscience might hesitate to expand into greater Portland and how can we collectively as a community help address those concerns as companies are considering? and perhaps hesitating. So I think, first of all, we could, we could just say that we're here today uh, to showcase the, the cluster because we know that it is emerging in this market. We are not uh, as substantiated, let's say, as a Boston or a San Diego, um, but as we called out in the report from CBRE and um, the success with Twist, this is a market, or excuse me, this market is seeing a lot of growth potential in this cluster, and we want to keep that momentum going. Would anyone else like to speak to that? I can just yeah, start. Can. Ooh, yeah. oh, no, this is great. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toss it to Sharon first. And then, Great. Um, okay. Yeah, I think one of the biggest concerns people have always, uh, anywhere I think in the world is talent. You know, can you hire, train, engage, and retain top talent in the region? And, you know, I would say that, you know, it's been talked about earlier, you can get people to move here. So if you're not finding the talent here, you can get talent to move in. But also, you know, not to give another shout out for Oregon Bio, but we have relied on Oregon Bio to help us to, in our training. So if you need assistance in bringing your talent up to speed quickly, uh, a, you know, entity like Oregon Bio does help you do that. Great, okay, let's, uh, let's hand it off to Ajay. I, I think I heard everybody kind of raise their hand to answer, so. <laughs> yeah, you know, we heard the refrain from the tech industry as well some years back, you know, I, I'm not so sure about Portland, you know, there's some, you know, Portland is, was not known as a major tech hub. And one of the reasons that some companies in the tech industry were reluctant to relocate here or expand here was because they felt that if things didn't work out for the company they were recruited for, there weren't quite as many other options where they could, you know, kind of find a different job. You know, that's a, that's a problem, quote unquote, that's a challenge that the Bay Area may not have. And I think this panel is demonstrating exactly the opposite, that there are, in fact, I think Lisa said, north of 100 and some 150, 60 companies in the area, some of which are prominent international names like AppSite, just raised $125 million, almost doubling their funding last week. I think they've attracted 50 PhDs from across the country to relocate into the greater Portland area. So that hesitancy might have existed because, you know, what happens if my option A doesn't work out, I want to go find another job. Now there are so many biotech companies and bioscience companies here. That's, that's, that's really not a credible objection anymore. So uh, I don't think there should be any hesitation at all. That's what I like to hear. Thanks, Ajay. Uh, Aditi, Lisa, would either of you like to speak to this question? I think I'm just going to echo what Sharon and Ajay have, have said. And, um, you know, I think there have been several um, uh, reports and uh, sort of uh, analyses of the gaps in uh, supporting early stage startups or even later stage companies in the bioscience space 
in Oregon. And, uh, you know, that's a wealth of information. But I think if I remember correctly, some of the gaps have been access to C-suite talent in addition to, you know, some of the other items that Sharon and Ajay addressed. Um, and the other one is capital. But as we've seen in this event and, uh, you know, if you just look at, if you Google startups coming out of or companies that are moving into our greater Portland area, I think that if anything, the last year with the challenges we've had, it's reinforced that all of these boundaries are, are truly virtual. And, you know, I think um, get access to talent and capital, we've now shown over the last year and even before that, that in the bioscience space, um, it is possible to change that and it is changing. I think the one other attractive piece I will mention, um, particular to our area, is that we do have an existing um, and, uh, you know, in, in the tech sector, and then we have a growing bioscience sector. And the low hanging fruit there is digital health and software health IT. And we're seeing more and more interaction and, and sort of merging between the tech expertise that's here and the bioscience and healthcare expertise that's growing. And um, one thing to mention there is OHSU is, uh, has recently launched an Office of Digital Health to uh, particularly target and address that growing um, demand as well as access to talent and technologies coming out of that space. And so that's another point I would mention. And I know OBA as well as Otradi are diligently working in supporting digital health. Great. Thanks so much, Aditi. Uh, all great points. And uh, I just want to remind the audience uh, internally when we were crafting these this event um, and this series of events, it was all about authentic messaging. So while we are trying to promote the greater Portland region, it's all about um, authentic, organic messaging about the great things that are happening here. So um, I hope that that's the vibe that you're picking up. And uh, with that, uh, we only have a, a little over a minute left. So I'll go around the horn, starting with Lisa. If you could give the 20 second or less elevator pitch on why a company should consider expanding greater Portland. That would be great. Thanks, Amy. Um, so I was all ready to answer the last question. <laughs> so <laughs> let me go with my pitch. Um, we have a very strong and growing mix of startups, scale-ups, and large divisions of global companies. They're all committed um, to growing the bioinnovation economy. Uh, if you're looking at the greater Portland region, um, Partnering with Oregon Bioscience Association and Greater Portland Inc., we have the ability to plug you in to companies that are in the region where you can get the, the real um, sort of download on what it's like to, to be located here. Um, what we did with TWIST was we got private meeting with legislators as they were helping to make their decision. Um, and really work with them to, to also help identify specifically if the talent needs that they were gonna have um, coming into the region were accessible here. So I would say, um, take an example from some of the companies that have chosen Portland and the greater Portland region to, to locate and let us help you connect to them. Great, Sharon? I think real life examples are key to anyone considering bringing their organization here. We have 700 employees worldwide, 500 of which are in Hillsborough. We've been here for three decades and been able to expand and grow. I should mention one of our fastest growing products right now in 2021 was in fact the collaboration with OHSU for rib fracture fixation. And that was very meaningful in 2020 amid COVID because that particular technology gets people out of the ICU faster or avoids an ICU stay. So uh, that was a collaboration with OHSU. I also wanna reinforce, it hasn't been talked about yet today that there are highly skilled machinists and manufacturing employees in the region, but also talent in design engineering and new product development engineers. So really the full gamut of talent coming out of the university ecosystem here. Awesome, thank you so much again, Sharon. Okay, Aditi. Yeah, I think I will just give my own personal example. I mean, I am not a company, but I am like someone that a company might want to, you know, they're thinking about moving talent in the area. And I moved here only five years ago from the D.C. area. And uh, what a pleasant experience. I remember reaching out to a diversity of individuals, looking 
at, um, you know, what my next step will be and trying to build connections. And as everyone has mentioned in this event today, you know, it was so easy to get connected. I don't think I had one person that refused to meet with me or ignored my email. And that was, uh, I mean, you know, I love the DC area, don't get me wrong, but that was quite different from my experience on the East Coast. And um, I mean, just, you know, at this event here, all of us have agreed to to be here and are, are you know, open to answering any questions after the event as well. And so I think uh, I would really reinforce the collaborative nature and the willingness to find the right contact for you if we're not the right contact that can address your current question. Perfect. Thank you. And last but not least, Ajay. Uh, three points. Quality of life, quality of life, and quality of life. We've talked enough about how many opportunities there are for professional development. From a personal standpoint, for quality of life, for you as an individual or you as a family, there is no better place. If you like clean air and clean water, if you like ocean sports or mountain sports, be in the forest or underground in, in camps and caves, this is the place to be. Uh, no better place. You can you can find any number of objections and we'll surmount them. Welcome to the greater Portland region. Great. Well, we uh, really hope uh, that you will reach out to us so that we can continue to reinforce these ideas of uh, openness and uh, that we can connect you to some of the folks who are on the um, on the panel here today. I'd like to thank my panel for joining me again. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of the companies who took their time to uh, share their experience in Greater Portland. Thank you to our production sponsor, Spirit Media, and to the universities um, that provided great content for this uh, event and from myself and all the staff at Greater Portland Inc. I hope you have a lovely day.